Hey everyone, Ajax Mations Productions here. I am back making Plotagon videos after some time. Welcome to a new series that I am calling, The Extreme Demon Experience. In this series, I will be talking about extreme demons that I have beaten and talk about what I think of them. I will be going through each level part by part. No matter if the extreme demon is rated or unrated, I will still talk about it. The first level I will go over is an unrated extreme demon that I created. That level in question is Light Circles. Since I created it, I will give some background information about it. I created the level back in March of 2023 for my level series, Dim Rain Circles. It is a series of 28 9 circles levels that I created that uses Dim Rain 47's music. Light Circles is the 25th level in the series and is also the hardest level in the series. The whole reason for the difficulty was because it used the song at the speed of light, which is Dim Rain 47's most popular song. It is three times harder than the second hardest level in the series, and is the only extreme demon in the series. It is one of the most unbalanced levels that I created. I spent 95 days from creation to verification. Here is the level ID if you want to play it. So without further ado, let's get started. One more thing, I beat this three times. We will be going off of my third time, since it was the most recent, and the verification to the update of the level. This cube is really easy. It is just a copy-paste at single speed tight double spike jump. This was because I wanted this to set you up for what is going to be coming up in the level. The first drop of the level is divided into four parts. The first part shows that I am not kidding about how difficult this level will be. The wave gaps are really tight, and it has some fakes in it. The second part in the first drop is the mobile killer. This part is free on computer, but it is stupidly hard on mobile. This is the run killer for any mobile player. My best on mobile is 27%, and this part is about 5% in. Going into the third part of the drop, there is some tight wave gaps, and a little bit of slaughterhouse style gameplay. Then you cut through more wave timings, and release clicks and then a normal wave that is slaughterhouse styled. Then you go through some saws, and you choose the path to go through. The thing about light circles, it is all about decision making. The diamond at 11% is the first of three places that requires you to make a decision. The fourth part begins with a dash wave, and then some problematic styled gameplay, and ends with a W. In the ship, I throw in a little straight fly, and then the rest is all ship control. The ball is pretty easy, and only has a tiny memory part. The UFO is in mirror mode, and is overall easy. It is just tapping to the beat in gravity portals. The spider has a part that makes you collect a wither skeleton skeleton axis the dual portal. The dual is just some basic spider timings and a dash orb. Then there is Mario, a spider click where you can die into a wall. I stole the cataclysm wave, since I didn't have any ideas for the second drop. I will talk about the wave in the Cataclysm episode. This robot kind of sucks. It can be buggy and also has a three tight jumps. The bloodlust ship is nothing special. And then you go through the dash orb. The ship makes you decide between taking the normal route or hard mode, which buffs the level from the ship all the way to the end. We will not focus on hard mode unless there's something interesting about it. Then it takes you into the bloodbath jump. The blue wave is where the first key change in the song is. It is in triple speed and focuses more on mini wave gameplay. It mixes some timings with spamming. When the wave goes back to gold, it is mostly easy. I mean it does go into mirror mode, but it is very straightforward. The only thing to point out is the gap at 37% is buffed from the unnerfed which led to an oversight in hard mode. This oversight led to a fixed hitbox being added to the level. Michigan's part throws and triple spikes in the level, and also has the swag part from Bloodbath, where the song is. The UFO, Spider, and Ship have simple gameplay. The memory has you skipping blue pads and orbs before the second hardest part in the level. Crack and Asonic's part in the song is the second hardest part in the level. It mostly relies on triple speed, and is the heaviest choke point part aside from an upcoming part. In hard mode there is a spike that buffs the part making it a huge difficulty spike. The wave in Asonic's part in the song is very chokeable at the start, but it becomes less chokeable towards the end. Auto part. 
Etzer's part of the song is super chokeable. There is some tight wave gaps followed by a consistent wave. Then you go through a diamond and then you go through a tight spike quarter as shown in the image here. Then you go into a diamond and then you go into the spam. The triple speed is just release clicks. The dual part is buggy at the intro, but is an easy asymmetrical part. You then decide to take the ship or the ball. The ship is the harder route to take. You can only access it if you take the normal route. In hard mode, an invisible wall kills the player to prevent cheating since the ship is disabled. The ball is the easier part and I will be focusing on that. The ball is really easy. Even the timings are fair. They aren't buffers, but it is easy to get past. The spider is short and simple, but timings are tight. There are two triple spikes and then you go into the extension. It's not over with the lime wave. This is where the level ramps up in difficulty, the tight gaps are less forgiving than before and has a micro click. After the fake you go through some more tight gaps. And then it slows down. Then you go through the diamond. Then comes the cyan wave. This level reintroduces the cyan part in the series. Prototypical circles was the last level to have a cyan part before this. It is the hardest part of the level. The entire thing is in quad speed and is the hardest thing in any of the dim range circles levels. You go through a diamond and turn into a mini after exiting the second diamond. Then you go through some tight gaps. Let me tell you, quad speed and tight wave gaps do not mix. It leads to chokeable parts and extremely difficult timings. 81% and 84% are two examples of this. Then the memory part. There are 8 keys you need to collect and then take 2 letter pass and then collect the heart. There is an invisible wall that will kill you if you miss a key or hit the wrong key. It is so easy to miss a key because they are close to floor and ceiling. There are no deep locks, so you will end up dying if you hit them. The pattern for the keys, path and heart is up up down down left right left right BA start. In hard mode, it is more evil because it is buffed like crazy. In normal mode, you are a normal wave, but in hard mode, I add an invisible size portals to mess the player up and make the keys harder to hit as well as making it easier to die to the floor and ceiling. After the cyan wave, there are some tight wave gaps and also a mini wave that is buggy when you enter the big portal. You do some spam which takes you into a ship. The ship in this image here is the exact same one as the ship in Bloodlust 98. In hard mode. I buffed the part and the ship is the exact same ship as it is in Bloodlust 98. The last obstacle is at 96%. It is this image here. It is a 60Hz 2 framer and it is one final check to make sure you can jump over it since you have to survive 4 minutes before you reach it. If you die to the jump, it is back to the start. The last 10 jumps are the easiest part of the level. The Ajax Mations Productions text drops down and then after that. You beat the level. Now, I will talk about my thoughts about light circles. I will try to keep my creator boss out of it. By the way, this level is not going to get rated, nor do I want it rated. If it gets rated, I will be confused. It uses the Bausch Vortex style and has the Cataclysm Wave, Bloodlust Diamonds, Bloodbath Jump, Michigan's second set of Bloodbath Triple Spikes, and Bloodlust 98. For me. Light Circles was a roller coaster for me. When I originally beat it, I had no idea what I was in for. I kind of liked it when I started verifying it, but it became torture after a month and a half. The part that made my enjoyment go down was when I almost fluked the level from 56% and got 87% because I missed a key. I verified it, but I accidentally turned off instant replay so I had to repeat it to get the recording when I beat it originally. My enjoyment dropped even more and I began to hate the level. Going through it a third time for the update, I hated the level since I had through this torture again. Hard Demon gameplay for 4 minutes is extreme demon. This level was a mental challenge for me and it tested my nerve control and patience. I spent a lot of time trying to verify this level from late March all the way to June 4th. This is the only extreme demon that I beat without streaming it or being in a discord call. Speaking of Discord, here are what some people have to say about their experience with light circles. 
there are only two victors of Light Circles, and here is what they had to say. Yeah, so Light Circles was really quite the experience. You know, opening up into the level, like, it, the level actually didn't take me that long, but, and I actually had a pretty good experience for the first completion, uh, because I fluked from somewhere. The level is actually built, uh, pretty good, pretty good, you know? There's some there's some choke points that I didn't like, like the transition into the cyan part is really bad. For the unnerved, there are some there there are definitely more choke points. It's definitely a much harder level. I had a really bad experience with it. Like I died to the extension so many times. I choked to the extension so many times, and it was just really frustrating. And like there's a really bad choke point at for like the bloodlust ship. You have to do a weird like ship swoop, and it is like just terrible. It's, uh, it's it's just a lot worse of a level, and then for for the hard mode, that's that's quite the ridiculous level. It's way harder than the other two, and there are a lot more choke points. Like that, there's a frame perfect. I'm pretty sure in Vermillion's part, like of the song, like it's like there's a ridiculous like frame perfect, and then like in uh in crack, there's like this really ridiculous wave gap where like a spike is blocking the gap. And it's just, and like, it's like a frame perfect, basically. Like, why are you blocking the gap with a big spike? Like, that completely ruins the point. But yeah, so that was that was just a really tough choke point. Obviously, I haven't beaten it yet. But uh, I don't know what percent I have from zero, actually. And then you have to talk about the bloodless ship at the end. The transition is awful. The worst thing I've ever seen in this game, period. It's terrible because like you're going from a wave into the ship and it's, it's just so bad. But overall, the hard mode is actually buffed pretty well, like overall. So I actually quite like the level a lot. Like it's actually, I'm having a pretty okay experience on it. But overall, normal light circles was a pretty good experience. Unnerfed, terrible experience. And the hard mode is been all right so far and i hope to beat it soon i thought it was the best of the dim rain circles when i first saw it, i was like this is definitely cool but i had the worst luck with it from zero so i ended up not liking playing it but the level itself wasn't bad aside from some balancing issues but yeah so that's all for today comment like and subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss another video and i will see you all in the next video see you friends and remember Keep dashing to 100. Goodbye!